is I'm going to spend a little bit of time really comparing uh, lessons learned in cloud computing and how can we apply them in the high performance computing world. So what I wanted to start off with is um, when we look at high performance computing, there has actually been some changes that I've been observing in the last two years that really have uh, brought us to a point where we need to look at high performance computing slightly different. And now when I'm, when I'm talking about this here, you will see that this is actually very much commercial focused, uh, but I think some of these have also uh, implications in the academia world. Um, what we've really seen is, in high performance computing, a couple of big trends that are forcing us to do things slightly different. First of all, the globalization. We see with a lot of companies now entering new markets or broader markets around the world, which forces them to compete in very different situations. Brings me to the second topic, increased competition. The world is moving significantly faster today than we've been seeing this in the past. New products getting developed at a faster pace, and um, that brings us to the point as an organization where I'm developing a product, I need to speed up my development cycles. I can't take five or six years to develop a new airplane. I can't take four years to develop a new car because new competitors are coming in. What's even more disturbing is that we are seeing competitors that we haven't even anticipated. And I give you some examples. Uh, for example, if you look at financial industry, uh, what we've been seeing recently is new competitors entering the market. In, in the US, for example, companies like Square or PayPal, but also you see companies like Apple now entering into the payment market. That is a competitor we haven't even had on the radar a year or two years ago. And we see this across all the industries. We see this in um, manufacturing, we see this in financial services, we see this in healthcare, we see this pretty much everywhere. The other thing what we're having is development of technologies has advanced that we're able now to collect significant more amounts of data. But collecting data without making it useful is not really practical. So how do we deal with this amount of data that we're collecting? We need more resources to do that. And then I go to market trend, we need to bring our stuff to market faster. Now, when I look at high performance computing, what are some of the challenges we're facing to address some of these market trends? The problem we have is that high performance computing is still fairly complicated. And most of you guys know that it means I go to a command line interface, I type in my commands, and if I'm not an expert, it's very difficult for me to actually use high performance computing. Also, pretty much all of you have, I guess, installed the high-performance computing, at least on the workstation under your desk, and you know how difficult it is. You need to patch the system, you need to figure out how to get all these things going. Now, when I'm a researcher, when I'm a product engineer, I really don't want to become an IT expert. All I want to really do is use my software. But I have to become an IT expert today because the solutions are highly complicated and complex. Also, I'm very much limited by scalability because I'm typically uh, relying on the box that I have under my desk, and that is how far I can go, or my data center that I have. And if I only have 10,000 cores in my data center, that is my scalability limit. And last but not least, nobody has growing budgets, so we're really struggling with how do I increase my high-performance computing usage. When we looked at those issues, they sounded pretty much exactly the same what we have faced in traditional IT about two or three years ago when we, looked at high, when we looked at cloud computing. It was difficult to use IT. It was very complex environments. We couldn't grow and scale as fast as we wanted. And we had reduced budgets. So we learned a couple of things in cloud that I think we can apply also to the high performance computing world. So what we have done in cloud is we introduced something like an intuitive self-service user interface. This was made so the average user can actually consume cloud resources. He doesn't have to understand all the command lines. He doesn't have to understand all the underlying technologies. He can go to a portal and subscribe to a service. Also, cloud computing gave us the scalable performance because all of a sudden now I'm no longer limited to my own data center, but I can go to a web service, whoever they are. I had security concerns because if I'm going into a shared data center, does this have an implication? Will my competitors see my data? So things like secure, security, robust access, all these kind of functions were introduced. 
And then for the IT organization, we had a challenge because we needed to deal with how do I manage on-premise IT and the cloud resources. But the big promise that we all saw is it becomes very cost effective. And when you look today at the cloud usage, what we see out there, cloud resources are pennies. And so when we can bring this back into our own IT environment, it's very easy for us to consume them and we can buy them now by the hour and we don't have to make an upfront capital investment. So if we take all these and bring this into the high performance computing world, what we are looking at is something like a self-service high performance computing. And the way I'm looking at this is, and what I'm trying to, to show you in the next slide, um, after that one here, with an architecture diagram, is really, think about this as a multi-layered architecture. So you have on the, on the bottom layer really your infrastructure, your scalable high performance computing infrastructure. This could be your specialized compute, this could be your specialized uh, applications, this is your data pools, and this is your, your grids or uh, your clusters. On top of that, you have an abstraction layer. And what we typically will see is that you will have a combination of on-premise as well as off-premise solutions. So on-premise is what I typically would refer to as a private cloud, and then the off-premise is either a managed cloud or also referred to in a lot of cases as a virtual private cloud or a public cloud. And then, last but not least, another layer on top, which is your self-service user interface, which makes it very easy for the average user to consume these high-performance compute services. So think about a medical researcher who is really all in genomics. He doesn't want to go and figure out how to install my system. He goes into the portal, picks his genomic analysis application, clicks on a button, says, like, I want to use it, it will be automatically deployed for him, he can do his research, and when he's done, he says, like, I'm done, and the resources go back into the pool. That's the idea behind it. So how do we make something like this happen? When I, when I look at this at more a high-level architecture diagram, I'm really looking at, we will have our self-service portal, which is the end-user interface, under that, we have something like a workflow engine. So an automation mechanism that is actually dealing with translating an end user request into a technical buildable solution. And from there, I will either then, depending on what my use case is, submit that into a cluster, which is really built on traditional cluster technologies, which will be fine in a lot of cases, either on premise, or what we just heard in the previous discussion, it may be a shared environment which is dealing with multiple customers. And then on the other hand, for a lot of other functions that I'm doing that don't require this high-end clusters, which might be more visualization solutions, which might be more smaller calculation jobs that I'm doing, I will be doing them in my cloud environment, either on-premise or off-premise. And it could be anything from virtualized technologies all the way to bare metal technologies. And then typically on the side, we have something like a workload manager, and then we have some management functions for the IT organization. I think the key for us to understand is that I don't believe it will be one or the other technology that's going to be used here. It will be a hybrid kind of technology. So I was actually very happy to see before when Wolfgang put up that Gartner slide on the hype cycle, is that this hybrid cloud in, is, is really making a significant progress because that is really where we will be going after. Now, when I'm looking at, when I'm building an environment like this, what this will give me for high performance computing? What I will be able to do, I will be able to actually increase the usability and the staff that get access to high performance computing. Today, a lot of the companies are limited by the people who have actually a workspace under the desk or that get compute cycles in the central cluster. That is a very small finite amount. But when you're coming back to the uh, original statement that I made that our competition is increasing and our cycles are shortening, I can't afford to only have a small finite set of engineers being able to get access to high performance computing. I need to get to a point where I can simulate my entire product that I'm building before I even build my first prototype. In order to do this, every single engineer needs to have access to high performance computing 
So every single screw or every single part that is being built can be simulated before it actually will go further down the design. The scalability will get me to a seamless point because now I can start mixing on-premise and off-premise resources and I can actually deal with the peaks that I will have in my environment. Ultimately, what it will lead to is driving down my cost and it will, at the end, get me to a point where I will be able to actually take my product to market faster. And when you talk a little bit to some of the companies in the industry, you will see that a lot of these companies, that is the ultimate goal from a business perspective. The sooner I get my product in market, the better it is for my bottom line. And with that, I'll stop it. I got shown like three minutes, so I think we have like three minutes for questions. Thank you so much.